Well, to discuss those developments further, I'm now joined in studio by John Gachi, a journalist and expert on South Sudan. Welcome to Africa Live. Thank you. Now, I want to look at some of the reasons behind exactly why the opposition isn't keen on EGOT forces being deployed in South Sudan. What essentially is the problem? I think for the, for the opposition, or rather the rebels, if you want to put it that way, the, the feeling is that when you bring in the EGAD then forces, then uh, EGAD as a mediator then loses, becomes a player. And then perhaps you wouldn't expect to get, uh, what shall I say, an honest broker, so to speak. That is a key issue. However, when you bring in the EGAD troops, then you change the entire power of politics, the dynamics, the military situation on the ground. With regard to uh, perhaps making the conflict a little bit more regional, and then you have all these countries that make EGAD with different, perhaps, uh, strategic military and economic interests coming into play, and perhaps this uh, gives the government of South Sudan a little bit more of a, an edge, so to speak. So what would be the best option in terms of maintaining some level of neutrality, but also ensuring that peace is maintained or at this point that peace is once again established and maintained what do the rebels want what perhaps the rebels are asking is that they don't want to have eager perhaps coming in and taking over the position of the U Ugandan troops. And remember, Uganda is part of Iga. Uganda has troops on the ground. Now, if you are now trying to change the Iga troops, or rather the Ugandan troops into Iga, without perhaps uh, having the, uh, the, the ceasefire being you know, implemented, then the situation becomes slightly different. Now, who are these countries in Iga that might necessarily want to perhaps send troops? Most likely, they will be Ethiopia most likely perhaps Kenya, most likely there will be Rwanda. Now, uh, and the other countries in, of Igad, that would be Sudan and possibly Uganda. They are fairly interesting uh, group of countries that have vested interest in the situation in South Sudan at the moment. Now, just two parts to this final question. One is how are they able to get Riek Mashar as well as uh, President Salva Kiir to the same table to ensure that some dialogue happens, that there is some consensus in terms of what to do going forward and what would be the best solution in terms of that peace process? Perhaps it's a bit early right now to have Riek Mashar and Salva Kiir on the same table. Remember, Igad is caught up in a fairly interesting situation. Uh, this is our an internal political issue. The government of South Sudan is still there legally. It, it is recognized by the United Nations, recognized by OEU, and recognized by IGAD. So the issue then of having Salva Kiir and Riyak Masha coming at the table is a fairly dicey situation for IGAD to make that call, as it were. They're looking for a way to, uh, to bring the two together, but without necessarily conferring or creating a doubt that they do not recognize the presidency of Salva Kiir. That's a very dicey diplomatic area that Iga does want to get drawn into. John, I'm going to ask you to leave it there for the moment. A pleasure having you in studio once again. We're speaking there to John Gashi, a journalist and expert on South Sudan.